Okay, so I'm listening to Alexi Welsh again, and he's talking about how sex is for nourishment and not entertainment. And, I mean, he's not against us being entertained, but it's about the frame with which we approach it and saying, oh, this is to amuse me and make me feel good in a moment. And, you know, I could be watching a movie or playing pickleball or having sex. It's all the same really diminishes it. He said something about using an iPhone to crack a walnut, right? Like, there's so much more it can do. We look silly trying to smash a nut open <laughs> when we could be actually having these incredibly connecting and transformative and transcendent experiences. And he's talking about the nourishment aspect of it. And this runs parallel with what I talk about in terms of needing social contact in general, that we need to be among others, we need to feel secure within our tribe, we need to feel seen, we need to feel that we serve a purpose and have value in that, we derive a sense of identity and meaning from that. And the fact is, I'm realizing that sex is a social activity. It's, it's coming together for pleasure, it's the need for companionship, and then Beyond that, it is channeled through societal norms. So in one society, seeing a woman's face may be stimulating, the back of her neck may be stimulating, her feet, her ankles, her legs, all these things. It depends on where you are, what part of a woman's body is, is scandalous, let's say. Obviously, in the modern Western world, we're much more focused on TNA. Um, and it's, it's a little more oriented to the center mass there. But again, it depends on what society you're in, whether breasts are even seen as being sexual. Half the world doesn't even see breasts as being sexual. They just see it as how we nourish our young. And so, you know, you got to realize that these ideas we have about what's sexy, what's forbidden, what's titillating, it's, it's fed to us by society. And inversely, conversely, how do you say, um, it's, sex is a major part of creating connections between people. It has a lot to do with forming, it's, it's what defines a romantic partnership. It's a platonic partnership, sex isn't involved. So now we have a romantic partnership around which we've built institutions such as marriage. Um, there's, there's a lot in most cultures that are about sanctifying and securing that pair bond that is seen throughout most of religion and it's seen in law, it's seen in all these different ways that says to you that sex also gives rise to society as much as society informs sex. And so it's an incredibly social activity and, and I hadn't appreciated the parallels where I'm talking about nourishment and he's talking about nourishment, but this is it. It comes back to, I think we're starved. I think we're really, really starved. In another piece, I heard him talking about how so many young women think it's impossible for women to enjoy sex because they and their peers have not, because ultimately their bodies have never been touched in a loving, sensual, engaged, and conscious kind of way. And I don't mean, you know, we have to sit on the mountaintop and meditate to get here. I'm just saying, be present, be aware, be in the moment with another person. Bear in mind they are another person, and what you're sharing is powerful. And you're not just roughing up each other's bodies to, to produce fluids, right? There's, there's something more to it. And... You know, it's, it's sad because I think that a lot of the disconnect we see between men and women may be coming from this breakdown in our understanding and regard for sex and our, our shared values around it. And we don't really have shared values around it anymore. And so you see men and women sort of segregating, self-segregating and interacting less. The interactions they have are superficial and unsatisfying and at times traumatic. I think there's something traumatic about engaging in sex with strangers or people you're not really connected to in a way that then the content of the sex is largely rough and disconnected. And Alexi Welsh also talks about rough sex a lot. There's no problem with it. It's like we got, we got room for that. But 
there is so much more and we're missing out on that if somebody says you have a thousand options would you just grab one and stick with it right so this is the idea the problem is that when all you can do is associate sex with violence it doesn't allow for that connection that nourishment that draw to come together and invest in each other's well-being in a mutual and sustainable way so we don't see relationships we don't see marriages we don't see families coming up which are essentially the building blocks of society so I'm tying these ideas together on the fly here but ultimately I'm thinking that a lot of the societal issues we have may ultimately be sexual issues because we've never been more exposed to sex in some capacity it's never been more ubiquitous and yet I I think we are perhaps as ignorant if not more ignorant than in times past because we have this very almost juvenile and I don't mean this in an insulting way I mean it's like children get ideas about things and they end up seeming kind of silly once they understand how it really works and I think we we suffer that we have these ideas about something but then we go to put them into practice and they don't work and then we assume there's something wrong with us or with sex or with the opposite sex or with the people we're involved with it it gets skewed it gets confused and um if we could really understand better and approach from a different perspective and really appreciate the value of the nourishment that it's sex is meant to impart, I think you would see a very different social order. I think men and women would be much more drawn to come together and invest in each other. I think we're so preoccupied with performative aspects, not just in sex, but of gender roles, of being, you know, ultra feminine, ultra masculine, and how we define that is, is a little bit off center too, because being masculine doesn't mean being aggressive and dominant and just taking what you want as much as we have room for that. Again, it's fun to play and get into that animalistic level. It's, it's not a good, useful, comprehensive definition of what the masculine is. Masculine is so many things. I've talked about this elsewhere, that our ideas about masculine and feminine are a little off point too. And I think that we would be able to better understand, relate to that, embody that, connect through that if we could zoom out a little and say, okay, I really don't know, let's go deeper, let's, <laughs> let's explore this further, right? Let's try to learn what it is we really could have and do want from those offerings and how we can express that and how we can express when maybe we've reached a limit or something's not working for us with tact, with care to say, listen, I really appreciate the energy and the enthusiasm, but could we shift over a little and try something different? Sweetly, playfully, with, with respect to the fact that somebody probably is trying. I think most people do want to give their partner an amazing experience in some way. I think everybody's working for it unless unless perhaps they're like really disconnected or dealing with some sort of a, a psychiatric issue. I think we all want to like be good lovers and give pleasure and be able to receive it well. And uh, I just think that we're given the wrong messages. And so we end up just hammering a a square peg into a round hole. <laughs> okay, word choice is, is tricky on this one right now. Um, but ultimately, we just wear out, we end up with like, you know, tennis elbow trying to make a thing happen that's not meant to happen that way. And then we're frustrated, dissatisfied, insecure. We feel more disconnected, more, more hungry for the thing we can't quite define. And if we could talk about it and be real about it and just compare notes maybe be like Are you having this issue too I I've definitely heard other women say that they get frustrated feeling like they are basically an accessory for acting out of a porn somebody saw and that's really sad because I don't know that in I don't think in most cases the men are trying to give her a bad time but I think I think they're trying to 
giver a really good time based on what they're told, but we're being misled and it's so sad because I see the, the social breakdown and, and the individual suffering that stems from that and I don't know how we can sober up and, and get our big girl panties on to talk about how we do this better before we go slipping back out of our panties and into this madness again. So yeah, it's going off for me that this is this is very connected to what I'm talking about in terms of the need for social interaction. This is a social interaction. It is informed by society and society relies on it to be stable. And I think this is why you see all the world religions admonish people to marry because it keeps them from running wild in the streets and causing all the drama of um, competition and mate poaching and the fallout of adultery and illegitimate children for whom there may not be stability or resources. And so, yeah, this is, this is something that is not just for the nourishment of the individual, but for the nourishment of the whole society. And that disconnect we're experiencing is probably at, a root, at the root of a lot of the suffering we're seeing. So I'm just trying to capture it while I'm, I'm doing another wake up brainstorm. Here we go. All right, so I'm sure there's more to explore, but that's what I have for now. Bye.